G'day YouTube, how you going? Spanners Gem 669 aka Adam. Tonight I'm going to be showing off my Australian DVD collection. Being the proud Australian that I am, I get just about any Australian movie that's out there. So I've got a huge stack here to show you all. And yeah, I'll get straight into it because I don't want to make this video too long. So get with the movie that no doubt everybody's heard of by now, Crocodile Dundee. Classic. Crocodile Dundee 2, which I didn't mind. I actually preferred this one a little bit better than number 1. That's number 2. Now, I don't know, I can't remember if I bought Crocodile Dundee 3 or not. I can't find it, but I didn't really think that was a very strong movie. So, Crocodile Dundee 3, I'm not sure if I've got. Next one's a very, very, very good film, Mary and Max, one of my favourites. This is a clay animation. Directed by Adam Elliott, who also directed Harvey Crumpet, which was a short film, brilliant film also. But yeah, this is a clay animation, certainly not a film for children. It's got a lot of suicide and mental illness things to it, so it's a pretty dark sort of movie, but it's a very, very good one. I've got Rogue. Directed by the Greg McLean, who directed Wood Creek. I thought the first three quarters of the film were good, but the last quarter let it down a bit. But still pretty good nonetheless. Wood Creek. Very, very good film. One of my favourite horror films. Mel Gibson, Mad Max. This is all three films. The whole trilogy. Mad Max. Mad Max, The Road Warrior, and Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. The films that got Mel Gibson noticed before he headed off to Hollywood. So we've got a comedy, Boy Town. Not one of my favourite films. Thought this was a lacking, but yeah, it had its moments. Television movie, Blue Murder. This is a true story of the corrupt law enforcement in New South Wales. In the early 90s, I think it was. Roger Rogerson, who was a famous, a uh, well-known detective. Nettie Smith, who was the criminal that was doing deals with Rogerson. And Michael Drury, who was the honest cop, who threatened to blow the lid on what Rogerson and Nettie Smith had going. And as a result, Drury found himself the target of a hitman. The best police force money could buy. One of the most shocking chapters in the history of Australian law enforcement. True story. Very good film very little known about it. Deserves a lot more recognition than it gets. An absolute classic Chopper, one of my favourite films of all time. Eric Banner playing Mark Brandon Chopper Reed, who's a real life um, hitman in the underworld in Melbourne. He robbed money from drug dealers, didn't work an honest day in his life. Eric Banner's best performance. Um, yeah, a brutal film, but at the same time I thought it was hilarious. You know, it was, you're not supposed to laugh at it. It's not a comedy, but the Chopper, his nickname is just such a character that you can't help but laugh at a few things that maybe you shouldn't. So this is a quality film. I urge everyone around the world to get out and see this film because it's one of Australia's finest. Comedy classic, The Castle, a real feel-good story, one of the best comedies that Australia's ever produced. Awesome. Now this is regarded as the best Australian film of all time. Gallipoli, another Mel Gibson movie. Um, it's set in Turkey when Australia were fighting them in the World War. And a story about friendship and it's got an unforgettable ending, very emotional ending, and it's Australia's finest movie voted as Australia's finest movie. Yeah, it's a very, very good movie. Um, fine Australian cinema. Kate Blanchett in Little Fish. He shows her versatility. She goes from playing Queen Elizabeth to a recovering drug addict in this film. She's trying to get her life back in order, but there's a few people holding her back. Um, she's trying to get yeah over that drug world that she used to be in. And Hugo Weaving is in it as well. Very good. Very dark sort of film. 
Strange Bedfellows, and we've got Paul Hogan, who's Crocodile Dundee in it. Now, there's an American film called I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry that blatantly ripped the idea of this movie. I haven't even bothered watching I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry. Uh, this is the film to see because it's pretty funny. Not the best, but definitely worth a look. I was pretty angry when I heard uh, the storyline to I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry because it is a blatant ripoff. This one is another comedy classic, one of my favourite comedies of all time. Kenny, a mockumentary following a man who installs portable toilets for a living. Uh, very, very funny, but very touching at the same time. Shane Jacobson, who plays the character Kenny, did an amazing job. It actually didn't start, they didn't want to make it a film to start with, but then halfway through it they thought, yeah, it was only supposed to be a short film. But halfway through they decided to make it a feature. And I'm glad they did because it is a very, very good film. Very, very funny. Jindabyne. Now, this wasn't the best movie, but it had a very interesting story. Four guys go fishing. They discover a body floating in the water. And instead of reporting it straight away, they decide to tie the body to a tree to stop it floating away. And they report the body after their fishing trip, which is in Jindabyne. And word gets... Um, Word gets out in their local town about what they've done, and there's a huge uproar. And the body floating in the river was an Aboriginal woman, which is an Australian native. And so there's a lot of racial tension in this film. Very interesting story, but I thought it dragged a bit in certain parts. An equally interesting film, Last Train to Frio. It's a story about three people uh, on a train. They start talking about each other's lies and a few secrets, nasty little secrets come out. A film basically just full of dialogue, but very good, very, very, very interesting. Australian independent film. Got to go out there and support as many Australian films as you can because there's a lot of really good ones that struggle to get the recognition they deserve. This is definitely one of them. The Boys, David Wenham. The, probably his best performance he's had. This is another favourite of mine. Very disturbing. Hardly any violence in it, but just tells the story of Brett Sprague, played by David Wenham, who comes home to his family after serving a year-long stint in jail, and within one day he tears his family apart. Not literally, but he yeah, destroys the family, gets them all fighting against each other, other, and just, yeah, you see the family just deteriorate within 24 hours. It's very, very disturbing. Tony Collette is in it as well, and John Paulson, who runs Trotfest, which is a film festival here in Australia. So, a very good film. An Australian thriller, The Square. Actually surprised me, this film. It was very good. Joel Edgerton, for all you Australians watching, you know who Joel Edgerton is. His brother actually directed this film. Very good. Bad Eggs, this is a comedy. Well, it's a dark comedy, uh, police corruption once again, so it's a serious subject matter, but comedy thrown in for good measure. Mick Malloy, Bob Franklin and Judith Lucy, well-known Australian comedians. Good stuff. Actually, there's a film. Where is it? Almost forgot about this film. Acolytes, another Joel Edgerton film. A really twisted sort of horror movie. Nearly forgot about that one. It's Acolytes. Dakota, another World War movie set in Papua New Guinea when Australia were fighting against the Japanese. Very dirty atmosphere, very well made. We've got The Proposition, a very brutal film set in the 1880s in Australia. There are Bush Rangers, which is basically like outlaws in the Wild West in America. We just call them Bush Rangers. Um, All-star cast with Guy Pearce, Ray Winstone, Danny Huston, John Hurt, David Wenham and Emily Watson. Very, very good film. Very brutal. Some scenes in here that, yeah, will shock you. They are very, very hard. And the last film, Romper Stomper, Russell Crowe. Very nasty neo-Nazi skinheads fighting against a Vietnamese community in Melbourne. Very nasty film. Alright guys, that's the collection. Um, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys later. Bye.